Hello and welcome. My name is Yves Sanford, VCDX number 203 and also CEO of the Comdivision Group. Today I'm going to present you how to upgrade an vCenter Server Appliance 6.0 to 6.0 Update 1. So first of all, um, the first thing you need to actually do is download the patch um, package from the VMware homepage. Um, I'm typically searching for VMware product patches and then there is a specific page where you can actually select the product you are at, so the version you are at, and then it will present you with all the um, individual versions and parameters to do that. Um, it might request you to use Java, but um, in the end, even if you don't have Java installed like I have on this box, it will still allow you to download things. So you click search now, and then you can actually pick the individual update or patch package you want. And this is basically the same procedure as for an ESXi as well. So you um, select that or you click the download button you, so you can also select multiple but in our case we only want to have that one file so you download you save it into a clean location um, as you can see this is an iso file so the next step after you have downloaded the file is to attach that to the vcenter server appliance which is similar to the um, disk based um, disk based updates we used with vcenter server 5.5 so uh, the next thing is once you have um, completed the download and attached the ISO image is we are going to open a PuTTY window and connect our PuTTY session against the vCenter server appliance. Um, logging into that um, box and uh, once we are actually on the system we are going to run the um, vCenter server um, update commands so that the um, update is actually run from the um, ISO image which is pretty straightforward it's basically software package install minus minus ISO so that it tells it it's the ISO image behind it accept EULAS so that it doesn't actually ask you for each individual package to um, confirm that you want to have it installed and now there is a set of uh, pre-validations going on so first of all the system is going to validate that um, you have enough space and all these requirements are met it also um, validates that uh, the downloaded um, packages on the ISO image are correct so it validates um, the individual files validates dependencies and checks if all of that is uh, prepared and um, set up correctly and then once that um, pre-packaging is, is, is finished it's going to to step-by-step -step start and go through the um, individual installations so um, it's testing the the individual packages and then we are going to pre-install them so there is a pre-install script which sets prerequisites backups files um, and does db exports and some other things and then actually the next step is then once the pre-install is done is that it's going to quickly rush through um, all the individual package installations so again in our case I think it identified 143 packages which need to be updated um, so that's going to take a couple of minutes depending on how fast your storage is because this is mainly a storage and to a certain degree CPU issue um, and that can go anywhere from two to three minutes to 15 20 minutes depending on on the overall performance of your environment once all that is done the only thing it's the system is going to require you is to run a reboot and then to wait for all the components to come back so the next thing we are going to do now is um, issue the reboot command and wait for the system to come back to us so that we can validate that all of that is working it's always a good idea to add to the uh, reboot command some information regarding uh, what this reboot is about which is also going to be stored in the log and also if you're using tools like ops manager that can be reported back into that that helps pe other people doing troubleshooting on why there is a change why in behavior or other things 
Once the reboot is completed, and I know that takes a couple of minutes, is um, you can basically visit the um, homepage of the vCenter server appliance and see if that's um, connecting uh, correctly. Um, one thing you need to keep in mind until all the services are up and running, it takes a couple of minutes or a bit more than that. Um, but we are going to take a look at one of the biggest changes. Something which came back is um, the um, server appliance console, which is um, on colon uh, on port 5480, like in the past. This basically allows you to do some basic system configuration and um, basic system information. So in our case, it gives us information in regards to the health of the, um, of the overall system. You can um, also influence parameters in the overall system, like networking uh, parameters, for example, time parameters. In our case, let's do a quick check on this specific appliance. And we can see there are some settings. And you could click Just Edit. and then for example modify the time zone if you want to so as most of you might know i'm sitting in germany so i'm setting it to to, to our time zone including summertime control etc and um, the other things is as this is a test appliance for me i don't want to have all that password expiration and stuff like that there is nothing worse than running a quick demo and then all of a sudden you can't log in because one year is over or stuff like that. Um, again, this is not encouraged for, for a real production environment. There you should use systems like that. Um, also, you can see here if you click too fast on something, um, it, will not, uh, it will give you an empty window. You need to wait until the form is populated and then you can enter it and make modifications to the overall system. So that's that console window, which is great that we have that back, which removes for a lot of people the pain of going through command line uh, configurations for a lot of things. Um, the next big thing, we well, web client is still not there, so we need a few more minutes for that. But in the meantime, we can actually, oh, there it is. Um, and that was quicker than thought. So um, now we can log into the um, vSphere web client and check the system over there and uh, see if all components and services and everything is up and running so that we can uh, really start using the system again. So in my case, I'm going to just log in with the SSO administrator, so administrator at vSphere.local. I know that's not ideal, but again, it's, it's a test and demo environment, so not giving too much time and too much about it. And while we are trying that, we could also quickly um, take a quick look into the um, platform service controller, which also has an HTML5 interface now in uh, vSphere 6, 0 update 1, which is going to make our lives a lot easier. Again, that removes all the command line stuff, or it doesn't remove it. You can actually use either or now, but especially when you need to create additional users or make changes to the um, PSC infrastructure. So that was the create user in, in um, stuff. If you want to configure some parameters like the password policies, I'm usually, usually changing that um, for my demo environments um, to remove certain limitations, which just make my life a bit more miserable. But again, not a production environment, so um, different rules apply here. Well, we just want to be sure that specific parameters are set correctly up. There needs to be a one down there, um, because adjacent characters, it needs to be at least one. And you could also change the lockout policies and everything else. So that's it. Um, that was a rather quick session. Again, my name is Yves Sanford, VCDX number 203, uh, CEO of the Com Division Group. If you want to reach out to me, you can do so on Twitter at my Twitter handle at Yves Sanford or drop me an email to y.sanford at comdivision.com. Thank you and see you next time.